QuickBooks Desktop 2024, receive inventory bill, invoice customer, and receive payment. Get ready and some coffee because we're locking into some non-stop QuickBooks Desktop 2024. Here we are in our QuickBooks desktop sample company file. We set up in a prior presentation using the enterprise version of QuickBooks desktop so we can practice the new unearned revenue feature within it. For the settings under the view tab, we currently have the hide icon bars selected and the open windows open, home page open within the open windows, which you can do by going to the company dropdown, selecting the home page. We're gonna open our reports as we do every time, go into the reports dropdown, company and financial. Let's take a look at that balance sheet reports to start out with, change in the range from 1231 to seven. And then I'm gonna increase the size of the font by customizing it, fonts and numbers. And then I'm gonna change the font. I'll bring it up to 14 just so we could see it a little bit easier. Okay, yes, and okay. We do this every time, so I'm doing it fairly fast. Reports drop down, company and financial. This time the P&L, the profit and loss, the income statement change in the range from 01, 0127 to 123127. Customizing the report fonts and the numbers changing the size of that font bringing it on up to 14 okay yes and okay back to the home page now in prior presentations we discussed the issue with the unearned revenue where we basically get paid before we uh we we do the work to compare the new process to the older methods, we first wanna look at the normal flow process, which is what we are doing at this point in time. In the prior presentation, we entered an, an estimate and then we entered a sales order, remembering that the estimate doesn't actually record anything. It's just basically saying to the customer, this is what it would cost if we're gonna pick up this job. In our case, we were imagining that we're gonna have a custom surfboard that we're gonna order that has a crazy, crazy psychedelic airbrush that they want or something. And then they had a sales order, which kind of locks in the estimate, but we haven't completed it at that point. Then if we don't have the inventory on hand, then we might go to the purchase order, meaning we're going to go to our vendor to buy the custom surfboard that we're gonna turn around and sell to the customer. And then we're gonna to have to enter the bill. And then also from the sales order, then we're gonna create the invoice. Once we get the actual goods that we can sell, then we can receive the payment. Now we've been tracking this in terms of journal entries in our little worksheet over here as well. We did the estimate, we did the sales order, we did the purchase order. We had no journal entries related to them. Those are all internal documents. We can track those internal documents by going to the customer dropdown and the customer center. And we set up our customer number one customer center. I have all my dates viewing over here, even though I'm working in the future and I could see my sales order and my estimate here for that customer. So they had an estimate and then the sales order. Under the vendor side, vendor dropdown, vendor center, we had then our normal vendor over here, there's the purchase order. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the next step. We're gonna say, okay, purchase order happened. I'm, now I'm gonna pretend that we received the psychedelic surfboard. So we're gonna hit the drop down over here and say, we got a box with the board in it and it came with a bill. So the bill then, I'll, if I enter the vendor, which was, what is it? One normal and tab, it's gonna say, QuickBooks says, open purchase order exists for this vendor. Do you want to receive against one or more of these orders? We're gonna say, yes, we do. Thank you, QuickBooks. That's exactly what we want. And then this, I'll hit, say this happens as of 01, uh, let's say like 0527, because we're working in 2027. The amount is $100. That's the cost. That's not what we're gonna sell them for. That doesn't include sales tax. It's just the cost side of stuff. So there we have it. And then down here, we can see that it populates on the items tab it's instead of the expenses tab, because this is gonna be an item that we purchased. There's the name, looks good. There's the cost, okay. What's this gonna do when we record it? I can't quite see the buttons at the bottom, so I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so we could see that. When we uh, record it, 
what will it do? It's going to record a bill. A bill is going to increase the accounts payable. So the AP is going to go up and then uh, the other side is going to go to the inventory because we're purchasing inventory. Now I'm going to uncheck this billable item. I don't want to make it billable, meaning that would tie it out to the invoice because I could tie the invoice out to the sales order. And that's the process that I'm going to be using here. Otherwise, I'll have two things that I could make the invoice from. So I'm not going to use this billable component. I'll tie it out basically uh, to the sales order. Now, the other issue, of course, that we have is the sub ledgers and the sub ledger will be tracking by vendor which will tie out to the accounts payable. We also have the sub ledger for inventory, which is going to track the fact that we have this one psychedelic surfboard, which we called the product number one on hand. So let's save it and close it and check that out. So we'll say save and close. And then I'm going to go into my balance sheet and I'm going to scroll down and say, okay, we should have and accounts payable down here somewhere in the in the liabilities there's the accounts payable double clicking on that changing the range from 010127 there's our hundred dollar bill so that makes sense and then the other side of it should have gone up to inventory so if i go up to uh, my inventory account where is there it is inventory double clicking on that changing the first date 010127 there's our bill increasing the inventory i should have a sub ledger for inventory reports drop down and then go into my inventory inventory uh inventory valuation summary let's just do that and this is going to be as of 12 31 2, 7. so there's our inventory that is on hand now here's our quantity and uh, the total asset value is at 30783 